In this section, we will learn about high availability, monitoring, and management of Jenkins. We will first create a Jenkins cluster of Jenkins master nodes and implement a highly available solution using a load balancer. We will then look at creating a backup and restore workflow for Jenkins data. Next, we will learn about how to monitor Jenkins using plugins and also third-party tools. Configuring security in Jenkins will be the next topic. Finally, we will learn about the Jenkins API and plugin management. In this video, we will learn about setting up high availability of Jenkins. We will learn about the high availability scenario of the Jenkins ecosystem and the support available. We will then configure a Jenkins cluster and configure them to work with a shared data file system. Next, we will configure HAProxy as a load balancer for the backend Jenkins nodes. And finally, we will test the high availability setup by failing nodes in the cluster. Although Jenkins is designed to handle large workloads of hundreds of jobs and projects, we can never be too sure that the tool will never fail or face some issue. In production infrastructures, downtimes of even 30 to 45 minutes, the time required to bring up a new node, configure and restore data can be expensive. Therefore, we need to design the infrastructure in such a way that it minimizes the downtime as much as possible or prevents it completely. The Jenkins ecosystem, however, does not have great opportunities for high availability support. CloudBees, the enterprise Jenkins company for paid users, offers a high availability plugin, but as you might have already guessed, it's only available to paying customers. So for the rest of the community, working with the open source option, there needs to be a custom setup which can go towards a similar setup as much as possible. In this video, we will strive to achieve the same. We intend to use a shared file system for this demonstration and so we will create our infrastructure in Amazon Web Services or AWS. We will create two new AWS instances which will serve as our Jenkins masters. AWS has a service offering called EFS or Elastic File System which is basically a NFS shared file system service which is highly stable and reliable. We will mount the shared file system on each of the Jenkins masters at the locations var lib Jenkins jobs. This will keep the jobs directory shared between the two nodes. The rest of the nodes will be configured in exactly the same manner. One of the nodes will be the active node which serves the requests via the HAProxy load balancer and the other node will be a passive one ready to take over the role of the master if the active master goes unavailable. We have created three new instances in the EC2 console of AWS using a public image of CenOS 7. Two of them will be our Jenkins masters and one of them will be our HAProxy load balancer. We have already set up Jenkins on the first two nodes using the same method that we had discussed in section 1. We have created both the nodes identically with a username with private key credential. Only this time, we have added an ID manually to the credential so that Jenkins does not auto-assign different IDs to the credential on the two nodes. If we click on update, we can see we have manually entered the ID Jenkins-deploy for both the nodes. We will now go to services and select EFS. And in the EFS console, we will click on create file system. We will go with the default options for now. And we will name the file system. We'll just name it Jenkins. And again, we will go with the default options. And we will click on create file system. This is gonna take some time. We will wait till the creating changes to available. Now that the lifecycle state has changed to available, it is now time to mount this file system on our Jenkins master nodes. We will copy the DNS name here. On the Jenkins master, we first need to install the nfs-utils package. Once the package has been installed, we will need to edit the etc fstab file. And at the end of the file, we will need to add the mount information for the nfs share. Since our nodes are in the EU West 1A availability zone, we will first need to add the zone and then we will paste the DNS name of the EFS file system that we had copied over from the console. 
we will add a colon and a slash and then we will add var live jenkins jobs which is our mount point we will add nfs as the file system and we will add defaults as the other options we will now stop jenkins with the system serial stop jenkins command and we will run the command mount var lib jenkins jobs if we run df h we will now see that our nfs share is now mounted on var lib jenkins jobs directory if we quickly check the information of the mount we will see that the jobs directory is now owned by the root user and the root group so we will need to change the permissions to the jenkins user and the jenkins group if we now check we will see that it is owned by the correct users we can now start jenkins by running the system serial start jenkins command and we will quickly verify if Jenkins started successfully. The second Jenkins node will need to be configured in exactly the same way. Now that we have configured our second Jenkins master node, both of our Jenkins masters have the same Jenkins jobs directory. It is to be noted here that the EFS file system that we are using here is just a NFS service. So if you don't want to use AWS, you can just go ahead and create a NFS server of your own. We will now create a new job in one of the Jenkins masters. We'll call it Python project. So we'll select freestyle project. And in the new job page, we will select git. And we will add the repository URL of the Python project that we had created. We will select the credential as Jenkins. And in the build step, we will add the execute shell step and we will run python star test.py and we will save this job we will now try to run a build for this job if we look at the output we see that the build runs successfully so now we have a new job in one of the jenkins masters with a successful build it is to be noted that even when we keep the jobs directory shared between the two nodes the changes made in the active node will not automatically be visible in the passive node. For this to happen, we will need to reload the Jenkins in the passive node. To verify this, we will quickly run the ls command on the varlib Jenkins jobs directory. And here we see the Python project job exists with all its configuration. If we now run the same command on the second Jenkins node, we will still see that all the file or the job and with all its configuration is also visible on the second node. However, if we go to the dashboard of the second Jenkins node, we will see that the job is not visible in the dashboard. If we now restart Jenkins on the second node, we will now see that the job along with the successful build information is available on the second node. The restart is not needed for the configuration to be seen by the second node. We can perform a reload of the configuration by performing a reload action using the API. For our example, we will write a small script to make an API call to Jenkins and reload the data. We will run this script every one minute via cron. The schedule can be changed to make it more or less frequent. In this way, the data in the passive node will always stay updated with the active node. In the second node, we will create a script called Jenkins underscore reload dot sh in the opt directory and we will add a couple of lines of bash code. Here we are generating a crumb ID by using the crumb issuer API call and then we are using that crumb to make a reload API call to Jenkins. We will now change the execute permission of this script and then we will create a cron entry for this script in etc cron.d and we will name the cron as jenkins underscore reload we will configure it to run every one minute and the rest of the options will stay as asterisk we will run it as the root user 
and we will run the bash command along with the name of the script. We will now run two new builds on the first server. And we will wait and see if they are available on the second node. If we now check the second node, we will see that both of the builds that we just ran are now automatically available here without needing a restart. We will now configure our third AWS instance as a HA proxy load balancer. To do this, we will first run the yum install HA proxy command to install the tool. Once the tool is installed, we will edit the file HA proxy etc ha proxy ha proxy dot cfg and we will remove some default configurations and we will add some new configurations in the ha proxy configuration we have created a front end definition which binds to the port 80 and routes all requests to the backend called bk underscore jenkins the bk underscore jenkins backend definition has two server definitions with the IP address of the Jenkins masters. We have configured HAProxy to route requests to port 80 of the Jenkins nodes where Nginx will receive the requests and send them to Jenkins. With our present configuration, HAProxy will check for the availability of port 80 on the backend node Jenkins 1 and only route requests to this node if it's healthy and if not, then it routes requests to the backup node Jenkins 2. This configuration can also be modified to directly route requests to Jenkins port 8080 and avoid the Nginx completely. To do this, we will need to remove the front-end and the back-end definitions and we will need to modify definition a bit. We will now save this file and finally, we will start the HA proxy service. We will quickly check if it started correctly. If we now go to the browser and try to open the load balancer IP address, we will see we have a Jenkins login page. If we now go to our active Jenkins node and then go ahead and stop the Jenkins process and we go back to the browser and reload the page, we will see we again have a login page for Jenkins, but this time it's not being served from the active node, but it is being served from the passive node. By using this configuration, we can have an active passive configuration of a highly available Jenkins setup where the passive node keeps itself updated with the active node job details and takes up the role of the active node when the active node becomes unavailable. However, if there are any running jobs on the active node when it goes down, it might not be recoverable on the passive node when the switchover takes place.